Today, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in order to become a licensed Medicare insurance agent. And so I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process. I will let you know at the end of the video, I do have an ebook and a course for sale. Neither one of these are required for you to purchase in order to become a licensed insurance agent. When this webinar is over, you will be able to take the steps that I've given you and actually go ahead and start the licensure process. I do recommend my ebook and course if you want additional information, if you're on the fence about whether or not you really want to be an insurance agent or not, um, if you want to walk through some real life case studies with me, if you want to know how me as an agent actually start and handle my business on it on, during AEP and during these other enrollment periods. So if you just want more information about about it from an agent's perspective, and then absolutely purchase the ebook and the course at the end. But what I don't want you to think is that those two items that I do have for sale are going to be equated to the pre-licensure exam that I'm going to recommend that you take, even if it's not required in your state, okay? So whatever I have for sale is just going to be supplement. And I do think it's very helpful to give you an edge because I am a pharmacist. I am also a subject matter expert in Medicare, and I put all of my thoughts thoughts and the way that I handle my book of business in that ebook and in that course. So let's go ahead and get started. If you have not already downloaded our links that show you what is required in your state, I encourage you to do so. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. So this will be linked in the description below if you have not yet downloaded this. I am in the state of South Carolina, so I'm going to use South Carolina as the example. However, you can click on any of these links and it will take you directly to the state requirements for your state. I will let you know that these licensing fees were uh, put into this document in 2023. I can already tell you that some of them have changed, including the ones in South Carolina. Um, so just know that these right here may not be accurate as of right now, but it will give you some kind of ballpoint fit ballpark figure of how much they cost. Okay, so let's go ahead. I went into the South Carolina one and it took me directly to um, this website here. And actually, most of them will take you to this site because this state requirement will actually tell you what is required in each and every one of your states. So once we get here, you scroll down and it's going to give you the insurance licenses that are required in the state of South Carolina. And so it's just telling you to figure out which one you actually need. If you're planning to sell Medicare health insurance, you are going to have to get the life accident and health insurance license. So that's number one. The license that you're going to need is the life accident and and health. So that's step one. Here's the one you're going to need, life, accident, and health or sickness, all right? And then it just goes into more information. And then number two, it says ensure that you satisfy the licensing prerequisites. Okay, so what that entails is you must at least be the age of 18 years of older, be of good moral character, not have been convicted of a felony or have committed any other act that would cause uh, for denial under this section within the last 10 years and not have been convicted of a misdemeanor, including uh, involving deception or a crime involving finance or insurance within the last five years. And if you think about it, all of this makes sense because what we don't want is an insurance agent that does not have good moral character or who has had insurance fraud in the past because then they may be jaded not to provide the best service to the Medicare beneficiary, okay? And then, so once you meet those requirements, number three is talking about completing a South Carolina pre-licensing education course. Now, as you can tell, this is not going to be required for every state. Although it's not required, I highly recommend that you take the course anyways. And here's why. A uh, bunch of the information in there in order for you to take the test is around life insurance, Medicare, um, annuities. And that may not be something that you are familiar with. So you can get the book and you can read through it and prepare to take the test. But I highly encourage you to actually take a class. And I took the class here through Brewer Insurance School. They have classes for folks that are in South Carolina and North Carolina, uh, Kaplan Education. Education is another one, which you will actually see uh, right here. So they're one of the sponsors on this page, or they advertise a lot on this page. So you can absolutely go there. And I do have a document at the end that you can also download. And it's just some resources. Um, and it has like the Kaplan course is 349 and there's the link to it. Um, we'll talk about E&O insurance and all this kind of stuff. So you will be able to take this actual handout and download it below so that you can get access to that information.
Okay, so then what this is telling you is, uh, unlike many other states, South Carolina does not actually require insurance agents to complete a certain number of pre-licensing education hours in order to sit before the exam, okay? So in other words, it's entirely optional. So I highly, highly recommend that you take the pre-licensing exam and it's a four-day course here and you can go in person or you could go virtual. I did it virtual. And then it was Monday through Thursday and I scheduled to take the test the following Monday. So I would recommend that you use the weekend to study and then take the test as soon as possible after. Number four, once you've prepared and studied for the test by whatever means necessary that you decide, then you need to pass the relevant South Carolina insurance license exam. Okay, and so this right here is just telling you how much it costs. It's $59 per attempt. Um, it's telling you how you can actually schedule it. So that's going to be very important. So once you're ready to take the test, you can go here and schedule that test. And so it's telling you all of that information in this section. Uh, so then once you've actually taken taken the exam and we're going to say that you pass because you have been super ready for it. You pass the test, you're then going to apply for your license. And so what that entails is using the National Insurance Producer Registry, NIPR, and that is the, the repository basically that's going to handle all things licensure. So once you pass the test, now you got to fill out your application. You're going to fill it out and you're going to send them $25. OK, along with that, you're going to have to have fingerprints and a background check completed to go along with your application. And then what this is saying down here is in South Carolina, you got to use Identigo in order for you to be able to uh, get the fingerprints and the background check. So and then it's another fifty one dollars and seventy five cents. So this site is very, very comprehensive and walking you through the steps that you need in order to become a licensed insurance agent. Now you can stop the video right now and follow these six steps and become a licensed agent. Now, okay, and then step seven, they'll just review your application. And once it's approved, you'll get your license number and all of that good stuff that you need. Now, so now you've actually got to become contracted with insurance carriers in order to be able to sell Medicare products. So in the same resources document that you can download in the description below, I have the insurance links so that if you actually want to go and directly contact contract with these folks, you can. Uh, I did put Blue Cross South Carolina in there. That's just because that's where I'm located. But of course, if you're in another state that has a Blue Cross plan or a plan that I do not have listed here, if you go to their website, they usually have an agent page where you can actually go and get contracted. Now, there are two types of agents. You can be a captive agent where you actually work for the one particular insurance company or you're a 1099 person and you only sell for that one particular carrier or you can be an independent agent like myself. And so I sell across all of these books of business that you see on the screen. And so that makes me an independent agent. Now, I didn't necessarily go directly to each one of these folks and do the contracting. I went through a broker service and the broker service then handles all the contracting piece. So I had to supply certain pieces of information for the application for these contracts, you know, like um, with your W-9 information, uh, your demographic information, contact information, all that kind of stuff. If you want to go that route, here's a piece of advice I have for you. The broker that I actually got contracted for, they negotiated their own rates and fees with the insurance companies for the products that we sell as individual agents. And so therefore, I am getting the same commission that I would as if I signed up directly with Humana or United by using the broker. The other reason I like using the broker service is because it's somebody else to keep me accountable and up to date on things that um, may change in the industry. And they're going to keep up with contracting so and they're also a resource so I'm a subject matter expert but guess what I don't know all things Medicare and so I can easily call them send them an email and they can help guide me some of the things uh, that I may have questions with so I would encourage you to explore whether you want to be a captive agent because if you're new and you don't want to have to learn all these plans you may only want to sell for one particular plan or do you want to be an independent agent like myself and sell for multiple? Now, you do not have to sell for all. You may say, in my area, United and Blue Cross is the only thing that's uh, widely available. So maybe you only sell for those two carriers.
Now, if you are going to be a captive agent, what that looks like is you could work for the actual insurance company. And so if you did that and say you work for Humana as an agent, then you could work in their call center and they just pay you as a regular employee. OK, and so that's one structure that they may have some bonuses and things tied to it, but you're not necessarily earning commissions. You're getting paid as an employee. Or you could be a captive agent for Humana, but you're only selling for Humana, but you're doing it as a 1099 employee. And then maybe at that point, they're sharing or giving you part commissions or full commissions, but you're only selling for Humana. You're not selling for Humana and United. As soon as you sell for more than one carrier, you're no longer captive. You're now considered independent. Okay. So those are the two big differences between what a captive agent is and what an independent agent is. OK, so those are the things right now. What you would have to do is you have to follow the steps that we just saw on that website. And then once you do that, you're going to have to get contracted. And there's also a third step. You have to pass annual Medicare training. And this is called a hit. Now, I've been an agent for about three years now, and I can't remember which came first. Was it the AHIP certification or the contracting uh, piece that came first when I was a new agent? However, one of the technicians at our pharmacy, we've got him starting to sell this year. He just completed the test. He passed. He finished his application, got his fingerprints, his background check, and then it, I hooked him up with the broker in order to start getting contracted. However, he has to complete a hip first. Okay, so if you are going to be a new agent, you can go ahead and start the contracting piece, but you may be required to take a hip first. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up a hip so you can see what that looks like, and it's right here. And a hip is a training that has all your Medicare training, but it also has a fraud, waste, and abuse. And this is required every year. So, what this entails is it's five different modules and a fraud, waste, and abuse module. And it, this year, for those of us that are already agents, they allowed us to bypass the training for modules one, two, and three, and you could go straight to the test. Um, I will tell you, I did do it, of course. Uh, and it, it was fine, although I, I I only got a score of, and I'll show it to you, I only got a score of 80 out of 100 on module one. Uh, so I missed some questions there. And then on module two, I got a 95, which was good. And then module three, I got a 90. Okay. So, and that was with me just not going through the material. I am going to go back through the material though, because I like to just refresh and reiterate some of the things that I know and some of the things that I don't know obviously because I missed those questions. Uh, so as a new agent though you will have to go through the entire course. So let's just look and see what it looks like real quick. Um, not to go into details with it but just so you're familiar with what the course actually looks like. So here's my one here. So module one is the overview of Medicare program basics. So this is choices, eligibility, and benefits. This was the one I scored the lowest on, mainly because it talks about if you're still working and you and what are you eligible for if you want to go into Medicare or should you do it? And then when are your all these open enrollment periods, all that kind of stuff. So um, I got confused on some of the questions and some of the stuff I just don't know. I just look it up. And then you've got module two, which is your Medicare health plan. So everything around the health plan portion of, of Medicare and just Medicare in general. Module three is your Part D prescription drug coverage. And then four and five are required for everybody to take regardless. You have to go through the training. And so it's marketing guidelines, which is a, this is a highly regulated market. So the marketing guidelines and then module five is the enrollment guidance and meaning how do you enroll in Medicare Advantage or Part D. So those are the modules. And then once you finish, there is a final exam that you have to take and you have to pass. Um, there is an exam after a quiz, I should say, after each one of these modules, which you just saw my scores. And then there is a final exam that you also have to take. Um, and then once you complete the final exam and pass, you, so once you complete all of these modules and you finish the final exam and pass it, then it will open it up for the fraud, waste and abuse portion to be open. And then you'll grab your certificate. Now, if you are an independent agent like myself, I recommend that you take the AHIP course because what happens is once you pass everything in AHIP, you can transfer all those scores to each individual carrier and that will satisfy the general Medicare and fraud, waste and abuse training for those carriers. If you are a captive agent, you have one or two, two options. You, that 
particular company may have their own training or they may send you to AHIP um, to satisfy what this certification looks like. Um, so if you are a captive agent, it may just be at the particular insurance company. You can complete their training to satisfy this requirement. However, if you're going to sell for multiple carriers, I recommend you do AHIP and then you could easily transfer your scores to each of the carriers. So by now, what we've covered is the steps to get your license. Now you're licensed in life, accident, and health. You have passed a HIP and got certified. You have reached out to a broker or you have reached out individually. And now you have gotten all the contracts in place. There's another thing you're going to need, and that's called E&O insurance. That's in, that's uh, errors and omissions insurance. And I put a site on here of where I have my E&O insurance through, and you will have to attest to it when you start getting contracted with the, the insurance carriers. Okay, so errors and omissions insurance is exactly what it, it what it is. So if you make a mistake or you guide somebody the wrong way and somebody tries to sue you for something, you have E&O insurance to help cover that. So now you've got your license, you've got contracted, you've got a hip certification, you've got your E and O insurance. So now you are ready to actually sell Medicare insurance. So kudos. Right? You can stop the video right now because now you've learned how to get licensed. You've also learned how to get contracted. All right. So what I want to go through next, if you want to stick around, is I want to give you some information on how I actually work up clients and how I actually find clients, okay? So it's one thing to be licensed, to have all this stuff, but now how do you actually find your clients? The first thing I'm going to tell you is to start with family, okay? The very first eight people on my books were family members, my parents, uh, my aunts, uh, and then that's exactly how I started, a couple of neighbors, and then you go to your church, and then I tell you it's going to spread like wildfire, okay? People are going to hear it by word of mouth, and they're going to come to you, and they're going to say, so-and-so recommended that I talk with you, or your client's going to say, hey, can you call this person? Uh, it's, it's going to be word of mouth that really propels your business. Once you get your clients, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to keep up with them, but I would recommend that you reach out to your clients maybe once a quarter. Once a month would be great. However, I have I run another company, so I don't have that much time, but I do try and reach out to my folks at least once a quarter uh, just to ask them, is there any questions that they have? Reiterate that I have a uh, phone policy where they can call me or text me or email me and I'll get back to them um, just in encouraging them, you know, to make sure that they keep an open line of communication with me if they have any questions. So I send out birthday cards. I send out thank you cards. Um, try not to send out, sometimes I'll send out Christmas cards, but I usually send out New Year's uh, cards just saying happy new year, that kind of thing. Uh, whenever I sign up somebody new, meaning they are new to my book or new to Medicare, I make sure that I'm calling them and making sure that they got their ID card, that they got all their documents in the mail. So it's just providing good customer service to make sure that the people that you're servicing got what they thought they signed up for. And if they don't, how do you get that rectified pretty quickly. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to go to medicare.gov and show you how um, it works. I'm not going to go into details. This is a part of the course. And so it just shows how I actually work up my clients and how I walk through what plan is going to be better for them. And so I'm just going to show you real briefly how that works. But basically, you can go in here and you can do find plans. And I will tell you, this site will look different by the time um, annual enrollment period, which is AEP, comes around. Uh, so just know that right now it looks this way, but of course it's going to change because it's going to have to have benefits for 2025. Right now it just has the 2024 benefits. So you would come in and you would put in your zip code. Um, let me see if they got one. So if you have a zip code that has two different counties, you're going to have to pick the county um, because certain plans are not offered in all counties. So that's why it's asking you that. Uh, we're going to look for a Medicare Advantage plan and we're going to do fine plans. We're going to pick that we do not get any help paying for the drugs. This is like for folks with low income cost sharing. And yes, we want to see our drugs and then we we'll go to next. So then you just type in the drugs. And add that in. And you can pick, you can change that. Maybe they're getting it every three months. You can change it to 90. And then all the strengths would be here. Um, and then let's add one more. 
It is. And so now we're adding in a brand drug where it's telling you, hey, there's a generic version available. Do you want to switch? And we can put yes. And we'll select a dosage. And we'll just do this one. And we'll do three ml pins and we'll just do one pack sold in two. And there we go. All right, so now we're going to do done adding drugs. And now it's going to ask you for your pharmacy. So it's just going to come up with these pharmacies that are close to where you are. Uh, so we'll pick this CVS right here on Lake Murray. And we'll click done. And you can click multiples, but I'm just going to pick one for this particular example. And then it loads all of this stuff up for you. And what you're going to notice about the plan finder is it defaults to showing you the lowest drug plus premium cost. Uh, you can change that if you want it to do it by lower lowest yearly drug deductible or lowest monthly premium. So you can change all that up, but it defaults to lowest drug and premium cost. Now, the thing about it is this is July the 25th when I'm doing this recording. And so with Medicare, you can only become eligible or a uh, your effective date can only be the first day of the following month in which you enroll. So if we were to enroll somebody today, their effective date would be August the 1st. And the way the plan finder works is this giving you the cost for the rest of 2024. So from August on to December. So for this particular plan, it's showing that Aetna has the lowest drug and premium cost for the drugs that we put in. And it's saying it's $1,608.40 is their retail cost. And then they have no monthly premium although they have to continue to pay this Part B, B premium because in order for you to be in a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to have both A and uh, B. And so that's what that's saying there. And then you can go in here and you can add these two comparisons. So if I was working up this client, I would look over here and say, okay, they've got pretty good um, additional benefits like hearing, dental, and transportation, primary care doctor zero, specialist 12, that's pretty good. Uh, and then you could, I may pick a, another plan since that's Aetna, and then you could pick a Humana. And then you just come and you hit compare. And then once you compare, you, there's your star ratings. There is a star ratings module in my course, uh, which is a pretty cool one because, so that you can actually explain these things and know how all this quality stuff works. And then it's got the health and drug plan deductible, how much you pay for services. So I may say 3900 in network. That's not that's pretty decent. That's not a lot of risk out of their pocket. Uh, so that may be something that the I want to recommend to my client versus this one over here that has a $75.50 for in-network. And so you go down. This one has transportation. This one does not. Maybe the person is not really sold and needing transportation. That's This is just stuff that you look at. Uh, and then it goes down through all of the high-level uh, services and what they may actually cover. And then when you get down here, you notice one of the drugs aren't covered. So now you need to figure out which one it is. And so if you go under plan details for this one and you go to drug coverage, it will actually tell you that it's the insulin glargine that's not covered. So it's not covering it. That's why the cost is so expensive. So what we could do is we could go and we could change the actual um, medications. Right here, we go to change drugs, and let's say we want to remove this one, and now we're going to add back just a brand name Lantus. And we do this, and it'll take us back through done adding drugs, and then now we notice it went from over $1,600 to $410, and we go to drug coverage, and it has the Lantus is covered, and it's covered for the rest of the year. It would cost them $175, and then it tells you what you would pay each month. And what I love about it, it tells you when you will get into the donut hole. But for 2025, the donut hole is going away, so it won't matter. Uh, and so anyways, that's how you look at the drug part of it. Let's go back and see. Let's go back to search results and see what happens now that we put in the brand name insulin. And see, now you see Humana's come up as the one that has the lowest drug and premium cost at $410. And so if we kept scrolling, we could see that all the way down. Aetna is also 410. Um, and so that's 
just an overview of how I use the plan finder. Now, here's the thing. you Once you find a plan that the person likes on the plan finder, that's not where you're going to actually enroll them. You're going to have to enroll them in the actual insurance carrier that you're going to put them in. So if I was going to put this person in Humana, I would actually go to the Humana's agent portal. And so I'll show you what that looks like on my screen. And so here's my agent bookmark. And as you can see right here, this would have all of my agent stuff. And so I would have to go into the Humana agent site and do agent sign in to actually sign this person up for a Humana plan. Okay, so that is just very high level of how I use the plan finder. And the reason I use the plan finder is because it's a public tool. So therefore, I feel like it gives the more trust to the uh, customer or the client because I'm using something that's public facing so that they can actually go out and do the same thing and, and look and explore these plans versus me logging into a portal that only I have access to and they do not. It, to me, it just doesn't look as trustworthy. And also, if something comes up that say this, say Cigna came up first as a plan that was best for them, I'm not contracted with Cigna. And I would let them know I, I'm contracted with X, Y, and Z. I'm not contracted with this plan. But if they decide that that's the best plan for them, then that's the plan that they should go into. Um, and so that's another way just to build trust. All right. So I did leave out one thing. Whenever you, during the training part, you also have to get product specific training on each carrier that you're selling for. So Humana would have their own product training. Blue Cross would have their product training. Uh, United would have their product training. So as you can see, there's a lot of training that goes and certification that goes with selling Medicare. Once you get the license part out of the way, each year, you're still going to have to do product training and then the annual recertification through AHIP. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, put that out there because I didn't think about it until I got to this part about um, the actual plans. Now we talked about how we get licensed. We have talked about how we actually uh, work up a client. We've talked about how we um, uh, get clients through leads, and mainly it's going to be through word of mouth. There's a bunch of lead generators uh, out there that they'll send these little cards out in the mail for you. I've used them before, like through Target Leads, and it's like a a response card and you probably see them in your mailbox and it's put on the back if you want to talk with somebody return this card with your name and your phone number and then those cards get directed to me or whoever purchased uh, that particular lead list and then you'd be able to call those folks now the last piece that I want to talk about is the money piece and the commissions and so the um so CMS just actually released a statement with the updated commission fees for 2025. So for this year, for somebody who is new to Medicare, the rate was $611 and it was $306 for renewals or somebody going into a like plan. And so now uh, for 2025, they've released these and your initial year is $626. So it has gone up by about $15 and your renewal years or into a like plan is $313, where before it was um, $306. So they always continuously go up generally year over year. And so this is what you can expect to make per person uh, whenever you sign somebody up. Now, if you're signing somebody up for Medicare and they're new to your book and therefore new to whatever plan you put them in, these insurance carriers may give you that money up front. So like anytime I sell during AEP and put PIP members into the plan, I usually get a check in January that's covering them for the whole year. Now, if that person leaves in the middle of the year, then they may take, some, they will take some of your money back because it's prorate it. Um, and then if you, once that person stays with you, because as long as that person stays with you in a plan that you have sold them in, you will continue to earn commissions. And that usually comes out in a monthly payment. So it would be that 313 divided by 12. If they stay with you, you just get that each and every month. And then it has the amount for PDPs, so it's a little bit less, and that's $109 for the initial year, $55 for renewal. And then these down here are just some referral fees and some other things that I'm not going to go into, um, but for your benefit and things that you need to know, these are the rates that you have coming to you in 2025 as an active agent.
Now, this doesn't mean that the, each plan will pay you that. What that means is that's the max that they can actually pay you. And so what you can go to also in that sheet that I'm going to link below for you to be able to go into, you can go and you can actually find um, right here. You can go in here and download the agent broker compensation data. So if you download this zip file and it has Excel files that will actually show you for every state what um, each plan is actually paying for paying for their agents, okay? So that's in that resource document that I will link below as well. So hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully you realize that you can start getting licensed and selling. I will tell folks right now is July the 25th, annual enrollment period starts on October the 15th. I preferably want to be ready to sell by September the 1st. And so that way I'm able to go to agent trainings and meetings and not have a whole lot of stuff over my head as I'm getting ready and prepared to start selling uh, October the 15th. And then the preview period window opens up October the 1st. Uh, so um, to close this out, if you are interested in learning more, if you know right now that you want to be a Medicare agent, I would tell you to go right ahead and pull up that document, go to your state's uh, site and go ahead and get started. However, if you are still on the fence and you're not for sure if you actually want to start selling yet, I would tell you to check out our ebook and our um, course. And so here's what the course looks like. And so what we have here is module one. It's just the introduction. Uh, Med Medicare 101, member communications and star ratings. These are modules that came from a larger course that we actually sell for folks that want to enter into the managed care industry. And so it gives you all the fundamentals of Medicare. Uh, member communications. These are all the things that your client or member would be receiving. It's very important, in my opinion, for you to be familiar with them so that you can better answer and service your clients. I will tell you most of this stuff right here is not going to be in any course that you take to pass a licensing test. Again, this is going this member communication section and this entire course that I have available is just to make you a better agent or to help you decide whether you want to be an agent or not. And then this section is all about becoming a Medicare agent. So literally everything that I just went over for free in this video is up here. So we talked about the licensing requirements. We talked about contracting and commissions, the exam. Um, we didn't go over the overview. I, I do go over more in this section what the prerequisite exam course looks like. Um, then we talked about the marketing guidelines. I actually gave you the link, but we actually talk about it more in detail here. And then I'll give you some formulary and pharmacy directory uh, tutorials. And then we do client workups in here. So you can actually see more of how I use the plan finder in different scenarios and which plans I would have actually chosen for someone. And then here's the star rating section um, that's going to be more applicable to, uh, to you as an agent. So all of that stuff is in here. And then we also have an ebook that you can also purchase. It has seven chapters, but the cool thing about it, at the end of each chapter, I give you some information about how I would handle or what I'm doing in real life in that particular scenario. So that's after every chapter in this ebook. And the ebook, again, will go step by step of what you actually need in order for you to become a licensed accident and health insurance agent so that you can actually sell Medicare insurance. So that is all that I have uh, as it pertains to this um, video today. If you are interested and you would like to purchase the ebook and the course and you have stayed around this long, you can use the code WEB25 and get 25% off the bundle of the e-course and the e-book. And that code I will put on the screen, it's WEB25. So thank you for your time. If you have any questions or any comments, please drop them below. Uh, during annual enrollment period, I will be hosting live workshops for those who have uh, purchased the course. As we talk about strategies for 2025, we talk about the plans once they're released after October the 1st, what some of the nuances are, and then just to keep in touch with one another and answer questions as we all do AEP together. So thank you again and hope you enjoyed it.